everyone. I'm here with uh, Thomas and Yusuf. We just wrapped up a really awesome cloud networking takeover session. Um, and I would like to you know, talk to them a little bit about some of the new things that they announced. But before I do that, would you uh, like to introduce yourselves? Of course, thank you. So my name is Yusuf Khan. I'm a Vice President of Technical Marketing at our Data Center Networking Business Unit. And yeah, I'm Thomas Shiver, uh, Vice President for Product Management, same unit. So yeah, looking forward to this interesting discussion. In the, uh, in the takeover session, there was a lot of key points that we pulled out of that presentation that were really, I think, speak to the heart of both the, the technical minded, but also the business minded. And I'd like to start with the business piece of it first. Um, I saw that a big push is sustainability, especially around you know, energy consumption and things like that. Um, when we talk about sustainability and, and energy consumption and things like that in our data centers, what tooling do we need in order to enable those kinds of things, especially when we're looking at the holistic data center? And then is it possible for our developers to really pull some of those, that data insight out and, and put it in like a custom dashboard for uh, the, the executive uh, team to say, yes, we are actually executing on the goals that you put forth? Yeah, no, listen, sustainability is a big push, and it's not so much push. I mean, I think it's a push in both directions. Really, the customer get pushed by energy prices and limit of actually how much power is available in some location they want to put data centers. And that's really what creates that push. And so really what we're going after is, is as we said, is like first you need to have the telemetry, first you need to have data. If you can't measure, you can't do anything. It's the older dash and that's true here too. So get the telemetry data, then put it in a collector and actually visualize it. And that's what we're basically doing, that's what we announced. Uh, and I think the really important piece, as you called out, is not just the switch, because we sell switches. You want to do this for everything in the data center, is you have a collective view of what your energy consumption is. And that's why we partner with the PDU vendors like uh, Pendrid and Vertif, to actually get a holistic view across power consumption in the data center. And then I think the question was, hey, this is great, you guys have this in Nexus Dashboard Insight, that's where we're going to put it. Uh, can our customers say, hey, I want to have a subset of that, I want a special version in terms of how I want to visualize that for my you know, other users. Can they put us on? The answer is yes, like everything in NDI and Nexus Dashboard Insights is available through APIs, so customers can stream this then out and wherever they want it and re-aggregate and re-visualize and reformat it the way they want it. So, absolutely possible. Perfect, no, that's, that's really awesome, especially, I mean, we talk about you know, global warming and, and all those things and being able to say that we're, we're actually helping while we're advancing technology, not just to solve the problems, but also not contribute to the problem is really quite incredible. Yeah, I, and I want to be careful because I don't want to go too far. Right, right, right. <laughs> we're not I, solving I, every problem. But, but the, the, just to be very frank, I think really what's going on, as I said, what, what triggers most of this over the last year is one, energy costs are going up. All of a sudden, the, the business model that some of these customers have around their data centers gets a little bit dicey because of the energy cost becomes such a big deal. The other one, which I see more and more, and then we see more of this, and this is probably some of the other questions, is what doesn't stop is the need for more compute, right? You always, we all see this like topic around, we want GPUs, we want AI ML. Guess what? Much higher energy per footprint unit, and that means it's not just the cost goes up, because you might be able to you know, make money off this, but the problem is you can't even turn this on because the racks are limited to certain power. And so if you're not working on a solution to get that power consumption in a rack down, you can't even deploy. So that's, that's really when I look at what customers push us on. That's these are two things, cost and a max limit per rack. And I think the other reason is also that data center as an entity is one of the largest consumers of power in rack. Yeah. So that's a big spotlight on data centers also. And then Thomas mentioned that beyond certain, certain rating, you cannot even power the equipment, but even if you can power the equipment, you don't have enough energy to cool down that, right? So, yeah. I mean, you, you spend a tons of energy in cooling down your racks also, so hot, hot aisle, cold aisle concept. So that is why it is absolutely important for our customers to invest into energy efficient mechanisms, and they're looking to Cisco, that look, okay, what you can help, not only with the switches, but everything that is plugged into the rack, whether it be compute, whether it be switches, or whether it be storage, right? Well, on that same topic of efficiency, um, you mentioned something about uh, translating the, the ECVDs, the Cisco validated designs that we have for um, our, our, our network architectures, the reference architectures, and translating them into Ansible playbooks. So, when we when we talk about that that um, that holistic playbook, what, what has been you you mentioned that we're, you do this in the lab a lot, testing it, and validating it out before you actually push it out. What's been the average time savings, and then? 
what guardrails or, or how easy it is for the, the uh, customer to change that playbook to customize their, their to, to their environment without necessarily exposing you know, some sharp objects that they can really hurt themselves with? No, no, thank you, thank you for the question. I think it's an interesting one. So we always try to help our customers through reference design architecture because there are five different ways to build a network fabric. So given our experience by working with the customers, by testing with our engineering team, what we have done in the QA, what we have done in the solution testing, we have a fairly good idea that where the best practices lie. But what we do is that we instantiate this, these network in our lab and we test them and we test them to the scale, we test them to the limit, not only just the scale but the performance of it also, how the convergence looks like, how we do, if we change the parameters, how the network behaves. So, the, the time saving really comes into predefining these best practices that look, okay, how you tune your protocol timer, how the convergence is going to look like in this environment, how far you can go in into your um, route scale, your TCAM entry. So that is what the value that these CBDs bring to the table is because they codify the best practices into an architecture. And that is where customers save the mess. So they can learn it without making the mistakes first, right? So that is one thing that's historically why we have been doing the CBDs. But we are taking the next step now that given that now autom automation is getting prevalent into the networking environment and we are heavily invested into helping our customers adopt these ad uh, automation technologies and these automation frameworks, whether they are open source uh, Ansible uh, framework or whether it is open source uh, Terraform. So what we also do is that we codify these design best practices and these CVDs into Ansible playbooks or Terraform modules also and we make them available to the customer. So not only they can learn the design best practices, but they can run that code and instantiate it in their lab environment rather easily also. It is fairly easy to, to modify it based on their needs. Like, I mean, for example, in the session I was talking about the playbook, Ansible playbook that we have launched for AI and ML uh, networking blueprint, uh, that instantiate a fabric using four spines and three leaves, but a customer can very easily change it to 16 leaf, for example, four spines, and make changes to it, right? Um, and we have very much curated examples available onto our web page also so that we can tell them how to use it and even the things that are not covered into the playbook or into the CVD, I mean, we provide curated examples on that one also. Perfect, no, that's really good because that's, that's always been the challenge is, is we haven't had that direct correlation between the uh, validated design and then how do we make that validated design even faster and being able to, to tie those two together without saying I'm going to tweak the setting and have unintended consequences or undocumented responses to those things uh, is really well, very powerful for engineers. Yeah, I mean, the, the way to think about it, I mean, it's user subscribe, but I mean, we have done, actually Cisco is to create all that concept, the brand, CVD, Cisco, valid design. We do this for 15 plus years, customers love it, right? What took them in the past is to read this and then figure out how to create these configuration and retype them and get them in. The eCVD is really, I take this and it's actually available already pre-done in the automation tool framework that most customers use. And then all what we do in addition is, and to point is like, the trick is, give them the parameter you want them to change, right, in terms of how do you scale out, right? But don't build in parameters you don't want them to touch, which is like the, basically destroying the whole value of validator, right? And so that's where, where the power comes in of these eCVDs. And so it's not only a valid design, it actually lets customers, I think this is where Yusuf is going is, you can literally, from getting this to running a fabric with that design, that's like days, right? It used to be months or even longer for between the customer having it and then figuring out how to actually implement it. Right. We can shorten it significantly. That's really where, I, in my perspective, the reality no, no, Absolutely, comes. and also, I mean, what we, the reason we are doing it is also is that we want to help the customers who are not very much experienced in Ansible or Terraform, for yeah. example, and that's why we came up with Nexus as a code, which, which is a project that we did. We provide separation of logic from the data. So you can use a data model to feed your logic, right? And we have a variety of data models also. For Nexus as a code, we chose YAML. So that makes it very easy for customers to consume this technology, right? Because yeah. they can define the data in a YAML file, and then their logic is already there, and then that provides a separation. Right? Yeah, no, and, that, and those are all great points, and and one of the and it really kind of ties into the kind of the last question I have, and, and it's you you in the, in the presentation you mentioned automation being a journey, and we can kind of see that in how we've how you've taken kind of these platforms that we have, and then being able to turn them into something we've exposed. So people who are a little bit more familiar with the tooling actually you know dive in and, and get hands on with it. So. 
but what gets often overlooked is, is just like we talked about, the platform automation. So things like NDFC and, and being able yeah. to use that as, the, as a focal point for that automation. So where, where do you see that kind of uh, moving forward as a journey as an automation platform? And then how are, how are we going to be able to leverage some of that that's being created on the platform and being able to use that for the people who do like to get their hands a little bit dirty? Where do we see that going forward? Yeah. You want to start first? Or you want to go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. Clearly, it's a journey. Um, and, and some of this has to do with landing on a set of tools that a lot of people use, which were, which were the, the two that we currently landed on is really Ansible and Terraform for, for infrastructure automation. Uh, and the other one is really from a journey perspective, it's just customers moving down that automation pass and you know nothing happens overnight, but it's clear that's what we're down. Providing all these snippets, providing all these examples to make it easier and faster to get going. Um, the other thing what customers expect from us, and this is maybe where you were going with the uh, Nexus Stash Pro Fabric Controller question, uh, there, is, there is an expectation to make it simpler to deploy validated design, not just in the data center, but stitch this together and how do you do this for the whole enterprise. And so this is one of the focus areas for the, for the Fabric Controller for us. This is saying, hey, one of the main Fabric designs that a lot of enterprise customers are using uh, around VX and EVPN. You can use this in a data center, you can use this in a campus. Can I use one source of controller and push this across Nexus and Catalyst? So that's one of the things we're going after with uh, Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller. With the initial capabilities are available today and more coming in the next three months. Uh, but that's really just, how do I not just make it faster to deploy new architectures, but actually make this more consistent across a larger pool of domains? Uh, again, the same idea here is how do I actually get the customer faster to value? So that's one of the things we do on NDFC. But then again, this is like all of this, then on top sits what we're going to do with the APIs that we have and how do you tie into uh, non-Cisco beyond networking automation frameworks, which most customers perfectly want to do. And so, yeah, and I, and I think, look, um, we, we did a demo earlier in the day today also, and uh, I know yesterday Lionel had a session in DevNet also, that basically explained that phenomenon because within a technology stack, right, in a data center, there is not just Cisco ACI fabric or Cisco NXOS VX10 EVPN fabric, there are other elements also. So the ability for us to have an open northbound API that basically exposes all the capabilities of the underlying platform, help us integrate with other layers of the stack also. And that by integrating, then we can leverage the power of automation and deliver a common user experience for our customers. And in the example that Lionel had in the DevNet uh, session was using ServiceNow integration with ACI Fabric, the CMDB integration, so that we are pulling all the information from ACI, bringing it into ServiceNow CMDB, and then um, using the integration that ServiceNow has with Terraform, for example, and then Terraform with ACI to drive a catalog-based system. Like, for example, you provision a new server, right? You, now you have a catalog item where you click on it in ServiceNow that triggers a, a, a web space for um, Terraform Cloud for Business, and that can call a Terraform plan and configure the ACI, right? So that is the integration across three different uh, levels or layers of this technology stack that can make it happen. Rather than tra ticket traveling from one person to other person to provision the network, to provision the VLAN, that is a self-service portal now and somebody can click on it and it is gets done right, right away. That's absolutely incredible, being able to have that closed loop automation and being able to drive it from, from very simple uh, uh, tooling, I think is, is kind of that that nirvana state that we've been talking about for a long time, so it's great to see that, yeah. that the technologies are there to, to enable that for, for our, our customers and, and, and our users, so that's really incredible. Yeah, I know, I mean, the technologies are there. I mean, you know, we, we talked about earlier this year, <laughs> similar similar topic, but it's, it's just if I look what happened between, it was February, I think, and now we're in June. Uh, you can clearly see what we, what we built as a foundation was infrastructure code for Nexus. It allows us to turn around and build these CVDs and then deliver us as eCVD very, very fast. We can react for our customers when they're coming with design questions and solidify this, validate this, and then hand it over. So we actually, I think, to your point, uh, mega, mega process versus where, where we were in the industry was, quite frankly, five years ago. Uh, how fast you actually can react and what we can help our customers here to really deliver very, very fast, safe outcomes. And what we try to do is also like, I mean, we try to, I think we are scratching the surface, right? 
but we try to pick a use case and demonstrate the capability of the infrastructure, right? And the automation capabilities we have. I mean, last year, if you remember that we demonstrated a use case where any change in the net box will trigger a change in the in the ACI fabric also. This year, I mean, we are talking about like, I mean, service now using CMDB uh, and uh, self-service catalog system also. And customer have, may have five different other use cases, yeah. but the, the beauty of this is that given that the infrastructure is completely open and automatable, you can deliver those use cases also. So the idea is just to define a few use cases, implement it, showcase it, and see if we can spark the imagination on the customer end and learn more about it. Right? Yeah, and turn them loose cool. and, and yeah. make great things happen. Well, I know that uh, you two are both very busy, so I appreciate the, the few minutes that you were able to take uh, out of your day to, to talk with uh, myself and our developer community. Uh, I would like to invite everyone who is curious about these technologies to explore uh, developer.cisco.com, explore the Terraform providers, the Ansible uh, collections, get into the sandboxes, explore Nexus's code, all of that's available for free today online. All you have to do is, is log in and, and explore to your heart's content. So Thomas, Yusuf, thank you so much for, for the time today. Thanks, right. Quinn. Thank you very much. As Quinn. always. Appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers.